Good afternoon, my name is Camden and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going through my most anticipated releases for this summer season. I'm going to be honest, as far as new releases go, fall 2023 is shaping up to be the best season for new releases that I have seen in a really long time, but I don't want to skip over all of the good summer books that are coming out this year, so I'm going to go into those in this video, but keep an eye out for my most anticipated releases releases of the fall that will be coming out in a couple of months because I feel like that video is going to be great. All that being said, I'm just going to hop into the books that I'm excited for that are coming out June, July, and August of 2023. The first book on my list is Mortal Follies by Alexis Hall. This book sounds like it's going to be really interesting and the plot does sound intriguing to me, but more so I'm here for the vibes and the setting. This book is set in the early 1800s and we're following some high society ladies, we're going to balls, we've got arranged marriages going on, all things that would certainly grab my attention. But this is also a fantasy novel, so interspersed throughout that we also have fairy and curses and enchantresses and I am super duper excited to read this one. It sounds a lot like Olivia Atwater's books but also sapphic so I think this one is really going to be a hit for me. I love the cover of this book. It came out on June 6th. The next book on my list is Morgan Is My Name by Sophie Keach. This book is part of a new evolution of the feminist retelling trope that we've been seeing cropping up a lot in the past few years. This book in particular is following the character of Morgan Le Fay, who's traditionally been the villainous character in the King Arthur legends. However, this book seems like it's going to kind of spin that on its head. It talks about how Uther Pendragon has hunted down and killed her father, created a very rough on the run kind of childhood for Morgan. So I'm really interested to read this book. I've always loved the Arthurian legend, so really excited to see a book that kind of touches on that. And also really interested to see where this whole feminist retelling trend is going to take us in the next couple of years. This book came out on June 15th. The next book on my list is The Only One Left by Riley Sagar. I'm going to read the description of this one to you on Goodreads, but first there's like a poem that's attached to the case within this story, so I'm going to read that first and then jump into the description. At 17, Lenora Hope hung her sister with a rope, stabbed her father with a knife, took her mother's happy life. It wasn't me, Lenora said, but she's the only one not dead. Now reduced to a schoolyard chant, the Hope family murders shocked the Maine coast one bloody night in 1929. While most people assume 17-year-old Lenora was responsible, the police were never able to prove it. Other than her denial after the killing, she has never spoken publicly about that night, nor has she set foot outside Hope's End, the cliffside mansion where the massacre occurred. Now it's 1983 and home health aide Kit McDear arrives at a decaying Hope's End to care for Lenora after her previous nurse fled in the middle of the night. In her 70s and confined to a wheelchair, Lenora was rendered mute by a series of strokes and can only communicate with Kit by tapping out sentences on an old typewriter. One night, Lenora uses it to make a tantalizing offer. I want to tell you everything. As Kit helps Lenora write about the events leading to the Hope family massacre, it becomes clear there's more to the tale than people know. But when new details about her predecessor's departure come to light, Kit starts to suspect Lenora might not be telling the complete truth and that the seemingly harmless woman in her care could be far more dangerous than she first thought. I have had mixed success with Riley Sager's books over the years, but I have enjoyed more of his books than I have not enjoyed, so I'm really excited to check this one out. It does remind me a lot of the Lizzie Borden case, probably mostly because of the poem at the beginning, but I'm really excited to read this one and see what I think. This one came out on June 20th. Next is Where the Echoes Die by Courtney Gould. This book sounds like a mystery novel with the perfect amount of weirdness in it. Beck and her sister Riley are drawn to the town of Back Ravel, Arizona after receiving a letter written in their dead mother's handwriting. Upon their arrival in the town, things immediately strike them as being off. 
there are absolutely no cars in the town. The people there can't remember how or why they ended up in the town and the town's leader is giving off very strong cult leader vibes. The setup for this book reminds me a lot of A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw, which is a book that I read last year and didn't quite enjoy as much as I wanted to, so I'm hoping this book will give me kind of a second go around at this type of a plot, but hopefully with a little bit more success this time. This book also came out on June 20th. The next book that I want to talk to you about is The Shadow Sister by Lily Mead. This book was not on my radar until very recently, but it almost reminds me of Jackal by Erin E. Adams, which is a book that I read and loved last year. This book is following two sisters named Casey and Sutton. Sutton is the older sister and she is manipulative and enjoys nothing more than tormenting her little sister, Casey. However, when she ends up going missing, that's definitely not the picture that people paint of her. They only talk about the positives, how smart she was, how popular she was, and how well-liked she was by all of her peers. Casey feels like she's the only person who saw her sister for who she really was. And when Sutton miraculously reappears, Casey is the only one to notice that her behavior has completely changed. Casey is determined to get to the bottom of her sister's changed behavior, and also to get to the bottom of why black girls have been going missing from the area for years. This book sounds super interesting to me and actually I just picked it up at the library so I'm really excited to read this one and see what I think. This one just came out on June 27th. Another book that came out on June 27th and possibly my most anticipated book that is coming out this summer is Gods of the Weirdwood by R.J. Barker. The north lands of Krua are locked in eternal winter, but the prophecy tells of the chosen child, one who will rule in the name of their god and take warmth back from the south. Kahal was raised to be this person, the Kaulre, the savior, taken from his parents and prepared for his destiny, but his time never came. When he was 15, he ceased to matter. Another Kaulre had risen, another chosen one, raised in the name of a different god. The years of vicious physical and mental training he had endured, the sacrifice, all for nothing. He became nothing. Twenty years later, Kahal lives a life of secrecy on the edges of Krua's giant forests, hiding what he is, running from what he can do. But when he's forced to reveal his true nature, he sets off on a sequence of events that will reveal secrets that will shake the bedrock of his entire world and expose the lies that have persisted for generations. I really love any book that turns a common trope on its head, so I'm super excited to read this kind of twisted version of a chosen one story and see what I think. This book came out, like I said, June 27th. Can't wait to read it. The next book on my list is The Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates. Despite being published smack dab in the middle of July, this book is actually set in a remote hunting cabin on a mountain in the middle of a winter blizzard. We are following a main character named Krista who decides to join a tour group that is hiking through the Rocky Mountains. When a huge snowstorm begins unexpectedly though, this group has to take shelter in an abandoned hunting cabin. Sometime in the middle of the night, their tour guide ends up going missing and when the group emerges in the morning, they find his severed head. Clearly there is a killer among them and they are picking off the hikers one by one. We have been having such a heat wave in New Hampshire. It's been in the 80s or 90s every single day for the past couple of weeks, so I'm super excited to get some wintry vibes going. This book came out on July 11th. The next book on my most anticipated list is The Jassad Air by Sarah Hashem. This is an Egyptian-inspired fantasy that follows the only surviving heir of a murdered royal family. Sylvia is a fugitive who has been living in hiding and hiding her magic for many years until one day her magic is discovered, which obviously sets off a whole series of events, including Sylvia being forced to ally herself to the people who murdered her family. I've heard that this book has a ton of really good political intrigue, so I'm definitely excited to read about that and also to get back into another Arabic-inspired fantasy novel. 
This book came out on July 18th. The next couple of books on this list are five star predictions of mine, so definitely kind of top of my list as far as excitement levels go. The first book is Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno Garcia. As many of you know, if you've been watching my channel for a hot minute, Silvia Moreno Garcia is pretty much my favorite author of all time. So naturally, I am super duper excited to read her latest book. The plot of this one is a little bit confusing to me, so I'm just gonna read it straight from the source, which is, of course, Goodreads. Aunt Sarah has always been overlooked. She's a talented sound editor, but she's left out at the boys club running the film industry in 1990s Mexico City. And she's all but invisible to her best friend Tristan, a charming if faded soap opera star, though she's been in love with him since childhood. Then Tristan discovers his new neighbor is the cult horror director Abel Urueta, and the legendary auteur claims he can change their lives, even if his tale of a Nazi occultist imbuing magic into highly volatile silver nitrate stock sounds like sheer fantasy. The magic film was never finished, which is why Urueda swears his career vanished overnight. He is cursed. Now the director wants Montserrat and Tristan to help him shoot the missing scene and lift the curse, but Montserrat soon notices a dark presence following her, and Tristan begins seeing the ghosts of his ex-girlfriend. As they work together to unravel the mystery of the film and the obscure occultist who once roamed their city, Montserrat and Tristan may find that sorcerers and magic are not only the stuff of movies. Super weird and off the wall, but that's exactly what I love about all of Silvia Moreno Garcia's writing. So I'm so excited to read this. Comes out July 18th, which is tomorrow, the day that I'm filming this. The other five star prediction on this list is The Weaver and the Witch Queen by Genevieve Gornicek. I read The Witch's Heart by this author last year and it was one of my favorite books of the year, so expectations going into this book are quite high. This book is set during the Viking Age in Norway. We are following two characters who met as children and took a blood oath to always help and protect each other. I'm expecting this book to be a story about profound female friendship and I'm hoping that we get to follow both of these characters throughout a good portion of their lives given that they met as children. I love this author's writing and the way that she portrayed female characters in her other book so really excited to check this one out. It comes out on July 25th. August is when things seem to really start heating up in the publishing industry so I have 11 books just being released in August alone. The first August release that I'm super excited for is The Narrows by Kate Alice Marshall. I have absolutely no idea how this lady was able to release two books in the same year because her other book, What Lies in the Woods, just came out in January and already she's releasing another book in August impressive. Regardless, I am super excited to read this one. This book has a sapphic romance, dark academia vibes, a strange boarding school, ghosts, and a mysterious river called the Narrows that alters anyone who falls below its depths. I really love creepy water stories, so I'm really excited to read this one. It comes out on August 1st. Next book on my list is one that I am so excited for. It sounds really, really intriguing, and that is Mr. Magic by Kirsten White. 30 years after a tragic accident shuts down production of the classic children's program, Mr. Magic, the five surviving cast members have done their best to move on. Just as generations of cultishly devoted fans still cling to the lessons they learned from the show, the cast, known as the Circle of Friends, have spent their lives searching for the happiness they felt while they were on it. The friendship, the feeling of belonging, and the protection of Mr. Magic. But with no surviving video of the show, no evidence of who directed it or produced it, and no records of who or what, the beloved host actually was, memories are all the former circle of friends has. Then a twist of fate brings the castmates back together at the remote desert filming compound that feels like it's been waiting for them all this time. Even though they haven't seen each other for years, they understand one another better than anyone has since. After all, 
They're the only ones who hold the secret of that circle, the mystery of the magic man in his infinitely black cape, and maybe the answers to what really happened on that deadly last day. But as the circle of friends reclaim parts of their past, they begin to wonder, are they here by choice or have they been lured into a trap? Because magic never forgets the taste of your friendship. This book sounds so intriguing to me. I cannot wait to read it. It comes out August 1st and definitely is going to be one that I either pre-order or have on hold at the library on opening day. The next novel on my list is actually a novella at only 128 pages long and that is Thorn Hedge by T. Kingfisher. This book caught my attention because it contains one of my very favorite things to read about in books and that is a fairy tale retelling that sets everything on its head. This book in particular is a Sleeping Beauty retelling but it's told from the perspective of the fairy Toadling who places the curse. From all of the reviews that I've read it sounds like Toadling is a very sweet and wholesome character so it seems like this one is going to be less of a from the villains perspective type of fairy tale retelling and more so that the story is not how we've heard it before. Regardless I am super excited to read this one and currently I'm a bit behind on my reading goals so having a few really short books like this at my beck and call is certainly going to be helpful in trying to catch up. This book comes out on August 15th. The next book on my list is The Water Outlaws by S.L. Huang. This book was actually blurbed by Shelley Parker Chan who is the author of She Who Became the Sun, one of my favorite books of last year. I feel like I've said that a hundred times during this video. Because of that, expectations are a little bit higher than usual going into this one. In this one we are following our main character Lin Chong who is the weapons master and trainer in the Imperial Army. After being disgraced and jailed, Lin Chong is able to escape and ends up crossing paths with a band of outlaws who are set on overthrowing the corrupt emperor. To be fair, the description of this book from the outset sounds like a hundred other fantasy books that I have heard about or read, but the things that set this one apart for me are one, the endorsement from a beloved author, and also two, the the fact that we're dealing with a female weapons master, which is a really cool element to this story. This book is coming out on August 22nd, so super excited to read it then. Speaking of Shelley Parker Chan, the next book on my list is He Who Drowned the World by none other than Shelley Parker Chan. This is the long-awaited sequel to She Who Became the Sun. It really hasn't been that long, it's only been a year, but I've been waiting on bated breath for this sequel to come out so I can figure out what happens next in this duology. The first book featured a lot of political intrigue, double crossing, and a main character whose ambition for power was only overshadowed by their desperation for survival. I am so excited to continue on and read the rest of Zhu's story, so I will be dropping everything to read this book when it comes out on August 22nd. The next book on my list that I'm super excited to check out is Good Bad Girl by Alice Feeney. It's no secret that I've been really struggling to find a good thriller this year, and Alice Feeney wrote Daisy Darker, which was my favorite thriller that I read last year. We are following multiple perspectives in this book and unraveling the mystery behind a string of suspicious deaths that have occurred in a nursing home as well as a kidnapping of a baby that occurred 20 years ago. How these two crimes are connected I have absolutely no idea but knowing what I know about Alice Feeney I'm sure it will be a very long and plot a twisty path to find the truth. I really hate to put all of my eggs in one basket, but a lot of my go-to thriller authors have released books that I'm either not very interested in or have ended up being flops for me this year. So I'm really holding out hope that Alice Feeney will knock this one out of the park. The next book on my list is Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Cañas. This is the author of The Hacienda, which is a very popular horror slash 
supernatural novel that was released last year. This book is set in the 1840s in Mexico at the very beginning of the Mexican-American War. And we are following two siblings named Nina and Nestor who are kind of getting caught up in the violence. Goodreads offered up this little blurb which had me intrigued right off the bat. It says, vampires and vaqueros face off on the Texas-Mexico border in this supernatural western from the author of the Hacienda. Honestly, that sounds amazing to me, so I'm super excited to check this one out. It also comes out on August 29th. Also coming out on August 29th is Her Radiant Curse by Elizabeth Lim. If you read Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim, this book is set in the same world as that, and it's actually following the story of Shiori's stepmother. I don't want to give too many details on the plot of this one because it may spoil some of the events of the Six Crimson Cranes duology, so I will leave it at that, but if you read and loved that duology, this may be exciting news for you. Also, the cover is so, so beautiful. The next book on my list is Together We Rot by Skyla Arndt. This one says, Will Green's mom has been missing for over a year, and the police are ready to call the case closed. They claim she skipped town and you can't find a woman who wants to disappear. But she knows her mom wouldn't just leave, and she knows the family of her former best friend, Elwood Clark, has something to do with it. Elwood has been counting down the days until his 18th birthday in dread. It marks leaving school and joining his pastor father in dedicating his life to their congregation, the Garden of Adam. But when he comes home one night after a final goodbye with his friends, he discovers his path is not as virtuous as he thought. He's not his father's successor, but his sacrifice. For the woods he's grown up with are thirsty and must be paid in blood. Now on the run from a family that wants him dead, he turns to the only one who will believe him, Will. Together they form a reluctant partnership. She'll help him hide if he helps her find evidence that his family killed her mother. But in the end, they dig up more secrets than they bargained for, unraveling decades of dark cult dealings in their town led by the Clark family. And there's a reason they need Elwood's blood for their satanic rituals. Something inhuman is growing inside of him. Everywhere he goes, the plants come alive and the forest calls to him, and Will isn't sure she can save the boy she can't help but love. That sounds so amazing. I can't wait to read this one. Again, August 29th just seems to be the day for all of these amazing books to come out, so mark your calendars on that one. We are getting down to the end here. The next book on my list is House of Marion by J.L. This book is following a 17 year old main character named Quell who is the practitioner of a very deadly form of magic. When her magic is discovered, Quell decides to enroll into a very elite debutante society that will help her learn to control and suppress her magic. However, as is always the case in these types of books, brushing shoulders with the rich and powerful always leads to uncovering some dark and deadly secrets. Goodreads says, brimming with ball gowns and betrayals, magic and mystery, decadence and darkness, House of Marion is perfect for readers who crave morally great characters, irresistible romance, dark academia, and a deeply intoxicating original world. All of that sounds marvelous. This book is coming out on August 29th. And the final book on my list of most anticipated releases that are coming out this summer is Herc by Phoenicia Rogerson. Goodreads states that this book is not the story of Hercules but is the story of everyone else from his mother to his lovers, his wives, his friends, and the man who laid out the 12 labors of Hercules. This book sounds like it's going to be a great installment in the lineup of Greek mythology that I've been slowly working my way through over the past couple of years so super excited to check this one out. Hercules actually has not been touched on that much in any of the previous books that I've read so I'm excited to have kind of a dedicated look at his life through the perspective of all of the women and supporting characters that are in his stories. This one comes out on August 31st. 
And that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching this. If you like this video, please like it, share, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know which books you're excited for this season. And I will see you all with a new video next week. Goodbye. Thank you.